نبتدي دلوقتي الساينتفك ويبينار بتاعنا ان شاء الله باذن الله نتمنى يعني انكم تستفيدوا الويبينار بتاعنا هيكون ان شاء الله من خمس اجزاء الجزء الاولاني هو هيبقى عن الكومن باثولوجيز مع الانتيرو شورد ديسلوكيشن الشاشه وط... جت ظهرت عندكم ولا مش مش ظاهره؟ بقت ظاهره ظاهره بس عاوزه فول فول سكرين المربعات اللي فوق يعني اه تمام فيبقى اول سيشن هيبقى عن الكومن باثولوجيز والانتيرو شورد ديسلوكيشن ده ان شاء الله انا اللي هتكلم عليه السيشن اللي بعده هيبقى على الارثوسكوبيك بانك ريبير وهيقدمه استاذ الدكتور احمد سعيد والسيشن اللي وراه هيبقى على البوني بروسيدجرز فور انتيرو شولدر انستابيليتي هيقدمه لنا استاذ الدكتور ماجد سامي والسيشن الرابع هيبقى عن الديسيجن ميكنج الجوريزميك ابروتش هيقدمه استاذ الدكتور عمرو عبد الهادي والسيشن الخامس بقى هيبقى للدسكشن هنجاوب على كل الاسئله اللي هتحبوا تسالوها ان شاء الله باذن الله هستاذن كل الباتيسيبنتس المشاركين معانا انهم بس يقفلوا المايك يخلوا الميكروفونز ميوتد تقدروا تسالوا كل الاسئله اللي انتم عايزينها ask all the questions you want but please use the q and a tab to ask your questions the questions will be answered at the end of the session in the discussion part of the session and all the speakers will be involved in the discussion دلوقتي هنبتدي اول سيشن ان شاء الله زي ما قلنا اول سيشن هيبقى على كومن باثولوجيز ويز انتيريو شولدر انستابيليتي. وات ار ذا كومن اسوشيتد باثولوجيز ويز انتيريو جلينو هيومورال انستابيليتي. There are two groups of pathologies that occur with shoulder uh, dislocation. The first group is the soft tissue injuries and the second is the bony injuries. We'll start first by the soft tissue injuries. Normally the glenoid uh, labrum is attached to the bony glenoid and the uh, inferior glenohumeral ligament and the, uh, uh, attached to the uh, scapular uh, periosteum. All these form the uh, glenohumeral uh, liberal complex and they are intact in the normal condition. When anterior shoulder dislocation occur, uh, bankart lesion uh, which is a version of the anterior liberum anterior and the anterior band of the humeral ligament occurs. This is the common pathology with rupture of the scapular neck periosteum. The bankart lesion can be a soft tissue lesion, as we see in this picture, only the, the liberum and the anterior humeral ligament are above. Or sometimes it's above with a bony part from the anterior rim of the glenoid, uh, and it's called bony bank. Normally, the liberum appears as tri black triangular part in the MRI, as we see here, a posterior liberum. When uh, the liberum is detached and the bunker lesion to care, we see it as uh, the triangular part become uh, separated from the glenoid uh, uh, anterior rim. The second pathology which may occur is the persis lesion, which is a variant of the bunker lesion. It differs from the bunker lesion that the uh, scapular periosteum is intact. So as when we see it in the MRI, we'll find that the scapular periosteum is continuous with the liver. The third variant is the glenoidal, glenoid liberal articular defect, or what we call a GLAD lesion, uh, in which a part of the articular cartilage of the glenoid is detached with the uh, glenoid liberum. And we see it in the MRI with small part of the articular cartilage attached with the liberum. The last pathology on the glenoid side is the anterior liberal periosteal sleep avulsion, and this occurs with chronic shoulder uh, dislocation. The labrum and the inferior glenohumeral ligament and the periosteal uh, periosteum of the glenoid neck become fibrosed and heal on the medial side of the glenoid neck, as we see here. This pathology is hidden in the glenoid neck, so it's difficult to be seen from the posterior portal. It's better to be visualized from the anterior portal during shoulder arthroscopy. The last soft tissue pathology is on the humeral side, which is a of the uh, 
the humeral avulsion of the glenohumeral ligament, so to call a Hagel lesion, can be a soft tissue avulsion or bony avulsion, so avulsion with small part of the bone from the humerus, and we call it bony Hagel lesion. This pathology cannot be easily diagnosed with uh, traditional MRI. It's best diagnosed using MR arthrography. We find the dye uh, sliding down along the shaft of the humerus in case of Hagel lesion. Normally, the dye will stop at the axillary pouch at the humeral neck, but with Hagel lesion, we will find the dye going down along the shaft of the humerus. The second group of pathologies is the bony pathology. Also, the bony pathology can occur either on the glenoid side or the humeral side. On the glenoid side, as we said, it's called the bony bankers lesion. It's a fracture of the anterior inferior glenoid. On the humeral side, with anterior shoulder dislocation, it's called the heel sex lesion. It's a postulateral humeral head compression fracture. The glenoid rim lesions are classified in three types. The first type is the bony bankers, which is avulsion of the uh, anterior rim of the glenoid with the attached labrum. And it is free bony fragment not attached to the glenoid. In type two, the media displaced uh, fragment become adherent to the glenoid neck and malunited. In type three, there is bony loss of the anterior rim of the glenoid. If the bony loss is less than 25%, it's given uh, the, 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 the name type three A. If the bony loss is more than 25%, it is type 3b. The cause of the bony loss may be either resorption of the bony fragment, which was separated during anterior dislocation, or repeated compression fractures of the anterior glenoid. Normally, the normal glenoid look like a pear shape with a wide inferior part and narrow superior part. When fracture of the anterior glenoid rim occurs, and the, there is bone loss with the inferior part of the glenoid, the glenoid will be, uh, the shape of the glenoid will be like inverted pear shape, and the superior part will be wider than the inferior part. The second pathology, as I said, is the heel sex lesion, which is pathology on the humeral side. When we say heel sex lesion, we mean the traditional heel sex lesion, which occurs with anterior shoulder dislocation. But there is another a heel sex lesion occurs with posterior shoulder dislocation. It's called the reverse heel sex lesion, and it occurs on the anterior superior part of the humeral head. There are many classifications of the heel for the heel sex lesion. All the classifications aim to help in managing uh, the patient and to take the decision for the uh, surgery. And the type of surgery will be done according to the type of the heel sex lesion. The first classification classifies the heel sex lesion according to the size and the depth of the lesion into mild, moderate, and severe. The second classification classifies the, the heel sex lesion according to the percentage of the articular cartilage involved into clinically significant, where there is less than 20% of the articular cartilage involved, and clinically insignificant, clinically significant, if the, more than 40% of the articular cartilage is involved, and between uh, 20 and 40 percent is the gray zone, and the management is debatable. In 2000, Steve Burkert uh, uh, classified the heel sex lesion into engaging and non engaging heel sex lesion. We mean by engaging heel sex lesion that the heel sex will engage with the anterior glenoid with abduction and external rotation. And Burkett uh, said that the, the case with engaging heel sex lesion, if it's treated with arthroscopic banquet repair, there will be a 70% failure rate of the repair. And the non engaging heel sex lesion is where the heel sex lesion does not engage with the anterior glenoid. And in this case, the patient can be treated with a stroscopic bunker repair with high success rate. This is the heel sex lesion and the glenoid. And as we see, with abduction and extension, the heel sex lesion does not engage, so it is non-engaging lesion. In the second video, the heel sex lesion engage with the anterior glenoid, so this is the engaging heel sex lesion. 
the drawback of this classification is that we can classify the lesion into engaging and non-engaging according to arthroscopic examination, but cannot be uh, classified. So, Steve Burkett and it was uh, developed a new classification depending on the uh, glenoid track concept. The glenoid track, what is meant by glenoid track, it is the zone of contact between the humeral head and the glenoid during abduction and external rotation. They found that the zone of contact between the humeral head and the glenoid track equal 83% of the normal glenoid width without bone loss. So here, the, the, the site of contact of the humeral head with the glenoid is the line from F to M, the blue area in the humeral head. We can measure the glenoid track on the normal glenoid by doing 3D CT in fast view for the glenoid. We take the widest area of the glenoid, which is the line CD, this is the glenoid width, and take 83% of the glenoid width, the line ED, and this is the glenoid track. For example, if the glenoid width is 20 millimeter, then the glenoid track will be 16.5 millimeter. Then we draw the glenoid track on the humeral head in the city, starting from the rotator cuff insertion to know the, the area of contact between the humeral head and the glenoid. And then we assess the site and size of the heel sex lesion and see if it is in the glenoid track. We call it on track lesion. If it is outside the glenoid track, it is out tra uh, off track lesion. The heel sex interval, uh, it, equal, it is the, equal the width of the heel sex plus the width of the intact bony bridge between the lateral border of the heel sacs and the rotator cuff insertion. If we have a heel sac interval size less than the glenoid track, as in this example, then this heel sac lesion is on track lesion. For example, if the glenoid track is 16.5 millimeter, and the heel sex is 15 millimeter, then the size of the heel sex interval is less than the glenoid track, so it is on track lesion. The on track lesion, its significance is that the patient can be treated with arthroscopic bone cut repair with high success rate because there is bony support for the repair, so the head will not engage on the glenoid after repair, so there is high success rate for bone cut repair in this case. But on the other side, we found that the heel sex lesion width greater than the glenoid track width, as in this example. For example, if the glenoid track is 16.5 millimeter and the heel sex interval 18 millimeter, then it is wider than the glenoid track. So this heel sex lesion is off track. So if we did for this patient bank cut repair, there will be high stress on the repair and the head will engage on the glenoid neck after repair. So there will be high failure rate uh, of the banker's repair. What about if the glenoid has a bone loss? The previous two examples, we are speaking about, about the glenoid without any bone loss. If there is bone loss in the glenoid, as we see here in this example, the size of the glenoid, the glenoid will be reduced. So the glenoid width will be reduced and the glenoid track will be reduced. This is the normal glenoid track. If there is a bone defect, we will measure the bone defect as we said, CT. For example, if it is five millimeter, then we will subtract this five millimeters from the normal glenoid track, and we will have the new glenoid track after subtracting the bone defect. As we see, it is reduced. So if there is associated bone loss in the glenoid, the glenoid track will be smaller, and the incidence for in being engaging heel sexism will be higher. So that when the patient has both glenoid defect and heel sex defect, the patient has uh, high incidence that his heel sex lesion will be engaging and bunker repair will have high failure rate. 
to know the prognosis uh, of the surgery for patients with anterior shoulder dislocation, Pascal Boileau uh, suggested a, 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 the ICE score, which is scoring system, to uh, suspect or to know the prognosis of the patient after a treatment. The score contains six points. The last two points were radiological assessment using plain X-ray. The patient is given score out of 10. Pascal Boileau said that if the patient takes score four or more, then he have high risk of failure of one cut repair. And he recommended that if the patient is score, has score four or more, he must be treated with bony procedure. After uh, the concept of noid track, a new modification was done for this score. The modification uh, involved only the radiological assessment. The radiological assessment is done using 3D CT, and the heel sex will uh, track and track. After application of the new noid track and stability management score, larger number of patients who were treated according to Pascal Brolo by uh, letter G, was found that they can be treated with repair with success rate because in the score, there were not, uh, they did not assess the heel sex lesion efficiently by plain X-ray, but after understanding the glenoid track and assessing the glenoid track using uh, CT, they found that many patients who were treated according to ISIS score by uh, letter G can be treated efficiently with bank repair. I want to thank you for uh, attending this uh, session. And now I will invite Professor Dr. Ahmed Saeed uh, to speak with us about arthroscopic bank repair. Dr. Ahmed, can I share the screen? 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 الدنيا واضحة؟ واضح يا دكتور أحمد اتفضل ظهرت الشاشة؟ اه ظاهر يا دكتور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل سنة وانتم طيبين يعني في البداية I would like to thank ايفا فارم تيم دكتور رياض دكتور مايكل دكتور محمد without their support this meeting could not be accomplished thank you ايفا فارم for your support let's start our lecture Dr. Amr had outlined the common pathology after shoulder dislocation or instability. It is either soft tissue or bony. I'm interested to repair the soft tissue in this lecture. Again, uh, what soft tissue uh, lesions uh, in this uh, pathology? In Bankart, we had four cardinal soft tissue items. After Bankart, uh, 1938, he described liberal tear, capsular enlargement or hyperlaxity, anterior limb of the inferior glenohumeral ligament tear, and heel sac lesion. This is what Bankart described first uh, uh, early in this century. Uh, actually, this is the same pathology up till now. Let's start our uh, clinical lecture or surgical lecture. First of all, I would like to start with the position of the patient. Uh, it is uh, really valuable for me and for my uh, colleagues to start your surgery after anesthetizing the patient, either generally or scaling clock, as uh, you prefer, to put the patient, to make a markers on the patient's shoulder. First, to outline the clavicle, the acromion, the scapular spine, and the coracoid and the humeral head. This is, will be very helpful uh, in your search. Second, what's about pitch chair? Uh, actually, most of our hospitals in Egypt had no uh, operative table with a, beach, with a standby pitch chair position button in the control unit. Uh, we use to uh, modify it by the usual position. Pitch chair does not mean the beach, actual pitch chair. It's a pitch chair when the acromion, upper end of the acromion, upper end of the acromion is parallel to the ground. Usually this occurs between 70 degree flexion of the trunk to 90 degree. So some patients in beach chair are 70 degree, some patients are 80 degree. It is not a standard, some patients are 90 degree. 
be careful of this position. Don't be hesitated about position, your position. Head support. Usually, the beach chair table had a head support. Uh, some commercial available uh, velcros are present to support the head. Take care during support of the head. Some patient had rheumatoid arthritis with high susceptibility to go for atlantoaxial subluxation, even cervical cord injury during this position. Be sure that the head is well supported. Again, uh, cooperate with your anesthesiologist to get the best position, the best marker, and the best position for the ECG leads. Uh, as you see in this picture, uh, our anesthesiologist had put the ECG lead very close to the, our, our operative field. Actually, you ask him to let it down and the medial to be away from the field. The field should be clear from behind and from anterior. First surgery, after positioning the rubbing of the patient, arthroscopic diagnosis, usually this shoulder is wide enough to go through. So we tell our juniors, if you want to do shoulder arthroscopy at first, go for recurrent instability. This is a wide shoulder, examine subscapularis, anterior labrum, the anterior limb of the inferior glenohumeral ligament, the glenoid, and the humeral head here, can and inferiorly the inferior glenohumeral pouch. Superiorly, you get the biceps tendon above, and this is the head, this is the posterior glenoid. Am I a little bit rabid? Inferior pouch is very voluminous, very large. Above the head, the articular cartilage, you can see the supraspinatus tendon. This is the biceps tendon, the supraspinatus anterior, this is the infraspinatus posterior. This is intact rotator cuff, intact biceps tendon. Again, let's go for the bankart lesion first. The bankart here, this is an acute dislocated shoulder with a classic bankart, separation of the limbrum with a large capsule from the anterior glenoid neck from the uh, six o'clock to the 12 or more to the superior biceps anterior lip, uh, ankle. This is the classic in a fresh case when you are find a uh, liberal uh, tear in acute dislocation should. In chronic cases, sometimes the capsulolebral complex, as this is seen from anterior, the capsulolebral complex are retracted behind the edge of the glenoid, as here, and you could not see it from behind. You should swift your scope from anterior to see this liberal uh, retraction. This is what you call ellipse lesion. What to do? First of all, dissect your labrum. If it's a chronic case, remove your labrum from the anterior glenoid neck. The limits is to see the fibers of subscapulars. After the section of subberoster release, you should try to reduce the labrum. If it is reducible, you have done an enough release. If it is not reducible, go for more release. Sometimes you can see a hump or osteophytes on the anterior glenoid neck. Use the pair to remove these bony lesions and then the periosteal elevator. Be sure that when your pair is working, don't open the suction to avoid soft tissue injury. Release the labrum and the capsule as a one unit, as a one unit. Be sure they are reducible to the anatomical site and then start your surgery. Lastly, shift your scope from posterior border to anterior board. If you don't see after you release this bleeding surface between the anterior soft tissue and the glenoid labrum, this is the head, this is the glenoid, this is soft tissue, this is the bleeding surface. If you don't get this bleeding surface, don't complete your surgery. Go and do more uh, shaving of this anterior glenoid neck. This is the key of success in bunker repair. Again, we are going to introduce our anchor. This is a metal anchor self-tabbing. There is a non-self-tabbing anchor. There is a biodegradable anchor. A lot of ty types of anchors. I like to start first anchor, put it at five or uh, if we can, for, uh, four point, uh, uh, 30 minutes position for glenoid neck. Putting your metal anchor through this cannula with a fish coat at the edge of the glenoid. Some speaks about two millimeter anterior, some speaks about two millimeter posterior. I'd like to go for the edge, at the edge of the glenoid. Putting my anchor, metal anchor, self tabbing with this cannula with a mouse fish. After removing the cannula, we had two sutures, fiber wires. We can pass 
the uh, the wire through the soft tissue. This is the bone support of the anchor, and then we are going for soft tissue. This is an instrument called the bird beak, sharp instrument, penetrate the capsule and the labrum, getting one limb of the sutures and take it out. This is to pass your sutures through. This is a simple suture form. This is the most important thing at the inferior. It helps in capsular shift, elevation of the inferior capsule, repair of the anterior limb of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. Make your knot, your knot tying. Here there is some difficulty. We are speaking about a bust and a moving limb. The bust is the, the limb of the suture that comes from the soft tissue. This is the, the stable end that we turn around it to make a knot. Why? To keep your knot away from the articular cartilage of the glenoid or the labrum. Look for the picture. This is the knot tying is coming down and it is away from the arterial cartilage behind the soft tissue, labrum, and capsule. After knot tying, we can cut with a, a, a scissor, a, another anchor. What are the numbers of anchors? Minimum in uh, a lesion of uh, two centimeter, three anchor. Minimum for stability, three anchor. I know uh, governmental uh, Papers, one anchor or two anchors for safety of the patient, three anchors are the minimum. According to the tear, one anchor every half centimeter. Every half centimeter, put an anchor to get a proper support and early stabilization movement. This is another form using the scorpion to bust the sutures through the soft tissue instead of the bird beak. This is another technique. It is the same to bust the sutures through the soft tissue, making your knot. After doing your knot, you are going to make a slipping, a, a sliding knot, and then putting another knot, locked knot, to be sure that your knot is safe enough. If I'm sliding over a locked knot with a knotted anchor, like you are seeing here in the video, after finishing your knot, you are going to cut it with the arthroscopic scissor. This is step by step to see how the knot is delivered. The locked knot is delivered downward to lock the sliding knot. After locking, look for the bumping action, what we call bumping of the anterior capsule, labrum, and the glenoid. Cutting the suture, and this is will achieve your procedure and go for another anchor. In 1940, Hill, Sack, Hill, Sack, Hill and Sachs described a compression fracture, like Dr. Amr said, compression fracture and through uh, superior part of the head. This can be seen radio radiographically. I'm not going to repeat. Sometimes the uh, bony lesions in the uh, bunker tear may be in the glenoid and through inferior glenoid. Bear card to DP showed recurrence rate after arthroscopic repair of soft tissue without bony lesion up to 4% failure. This is a very good 96% of success with our stroke bunker. is very good uh, rate, actually. Uh, again, how to diagnose the bony lesion? First of all, after introducing scope inside the shoulder, like the video, do an abduction external rotation. If the head comes out, the anterior glenoid, like here, inferior, the head is coming out of the anterior glenoid, this is an engaging heel secretion. This heel sac region is bigger enough to dislocate even after soft tissue repair. You need to address this problem at first before any surgery. Examination, abduction, external rotation. If the head comes out the anterior glenoid, this is engaging. If the head does not come out, this is non-engaging soft tissue is enough. If it is coming out, soft tissue is not enough alone. You should address the problem and put another uh, uh, procedure to be sure of your search. Uh, this is an example of a hillsack lesion with bunker soft tissue uh, tear, and this is the hillsack in the antro or in the coronal cut. After addressing this problem, going for examination, look here, the head is coming out of the glenoid. Antro, if the head is out. You, is it clear? Yes, it's clear. The head is out of the glenoid. This is an 
off track. The head is off the track of the glenoid. So soft tissue repair is not enough. Soft tissue repair is not enough. And this is, can be addressed from the clinical examination, from the radiological investigation, and the arthroscopic examination. Then after soft tissue repair, you need to address these problems. So a, a, a very famous procedure called remblassage. This is after Connolly procedure, was the first to use the inferior infraspinatus tendon and the part of the greater tuberosity. He get it by open surgery, put it in the heel sac defect, and he closed the heel sac defect. This is the Connolly procedure had been uh, advanced to arthroscopic technique by a French surgeon called the Wolf. 2007, he called this surgery a remblassage. What remblassage? It's a surgery of filling of the defect to fill the bony defect of the humeral head, not the glenoid defect. The humeral head, fill it with putting an anchor and get it from intraarticular to extraarticular to infraspinatus, doing a tenodesis. Insert the tendon in the defect. This will shorten the moving arc of the head. This is the surgery of remblassage. This is the bostro superior defect. And this is the anchor using an anchor, RC anchor, one or two row according to the defect, then getting out the sutures and making, making your knot outside the tendon, it's not visible, then closure, autinodesis of the infrasinus like that, closure of soft tissue to the defect, this will stabilize your shoulder in a large heel sac region. This is my preferred procedure in Bankard with a humeral head off track. Uh, uh, heel At the end, I would like to thank Dr. Amr Ahmad, Eva Farm again. Let's introduce Dr. Magid Sani. Dr. Magid, Dr. Magid, Sazda Harak, Tamil, share the screen. Dr. Magid, Harak, Mana. Dr. Magid Sani. دكتور ماجد انا عاوز افتح الصوت بس دكتور ماجد اه حضرتك طيب استاذ حضرتك بس تعمل شير للسكرين بعد اذنك لو في اي اسئله استاذن البارتيسبنتس نبعت الاسئله على Question and answer table. Okay. Benet, the screen. Okay, okay. Now, now we move to the bony procedures for anterior shoulder instability after hearing about the bankers repair. We, we need to know the principle, the indications, the technique, and the modifications. In shoulder instability, we now know that we can have a simple labral tear, which we can repair by a Bankert repair. We can have deficient capsule labral complex, such as patients who had previous soft tissue repairs or those patients with generalized ligament laxity. These patients have deficient soft tissues and therefore we cannot rely on their soft tissues for repairing the shoulder instability. And we can have patients who have a bulging of the inferior glenohumeral ligament from the humeral side, as we heard in the previous presentation, what's called the Hagel lesion. And again, we cannot repair this by doing a, a repair process of the soft tissues on the glenoid side. So if we simply have an avulsed labrum, we can repair it by Bankert repair. But if we have these deficient soft tissues, we cannot rely on them for the repair and lastly, if we have an avulsion from the humeral side, we cannot repair from the glenoid side. We have various bony problems, the hill sacs, and we already know that if it's on track, it, it's not that significant. If it's off track, 
we must do something for the hill sacs. We can have a glenoid defect. The glenoid tract is already very critical. It's small glenoid relative to the big humeral head. So if we have an additional glenoid defect, this will make it more clear, critical and we have to address it. If we have a combined hill sacs and glenoid defect, so if the hill sacs defect is working on a, a glenoid which is smaller than normal, it's more likely to go off track. The idea of the bony procedures is transferring the coracoid process with the attached conjoined tendon to the freshened glenoid neck. The idea is to increase the width of the glenoid. If we increase the width of the inferior half of the glenoid, this will increase the glenoid track, and therefore the shoulder is less likely to dislocate. So what we are trying to do here is to increase the glenoid track. An additional is effect is that we put the graft when fix it to the glenoid neck through a subscapularis split. So the inferior half of the subscapularis is fixed by the conjoined tendon which is attached to the graft. As the humeral head tries to slip under the subscapularis to dislocate entry inferiorly, the conjoined tendon pulls down on the inferior half of the subscapularis, preventing this from happening. And this is what we call the additional sling effect. So lateral shape functions by the bony block, which increases the functional glenoid arc and increases the width and the glenoid track. And additional effect is the sling effect. When do we suspect that this patient will not benefit from a Bankert repair and needs a bony procedure? In the clinical assessment, we usually do the apprehension test in 90 degrees of abduction. But if we do the apprehension test in mid-abduction, that is 45 degrees of abduction, and it is still positive, this means that the patient either has a bony defect or has highly deficient soft tissues. And in either case, he will need a bony procedure. These kinds of patients who have generalized ligament laxity, we cannot depend on their soft tissues. And finally, patients with extremely increased external rotation range. Of course, we do an X-ray and CT and MRI assessment for the humeral head to see the hill sacs and for the glenoid to see the glenoid defect. And we already heard this in the previous presentations. So if we have a glenoid defect, the glenoid track is more and more decreased. And therefore, the shoulder is more likely to dislocate. If it's an acute fracture, we fixed. If it's a chronic defect, we reconstruct it by a bony procedure. This bony procedure increases the size of the inferior half of the glenoid, increasing the functional glenoid width and the glenoid tract. And this is how it looks eventually. We do it if we have a glenoid and through inferior glenoid defect, which is more than 20% of the width of the glenoid. In cases of acute fractures, we fix them if they, again, if they are more than one course of the glenoid fossa. Let's move to another scenario. We've already heard about the hill sacs lesion. We know that it could be off track, engaging on the anterior glenoid rim and leading to dislocation. We already that know that one way of solving this problem is to close this defect by the remplissage procedure, putting anchors for the bankert and other anchors to do the infraspinatus stenodesis. Another approach is to leave the hill sacs as it is, but to render it on track instead of off track, we will increase the size of the glenoid track, like in this case. So the hill sacs now is on track because the glenoid track has been increased by a bony procedure. In bipolar defects, we always have a low threshold for letter J. Always take the decision of letter J easily because it's a combined bony defect and it's more likely to fail with soft tissue operation. Unless it's mainly a hill sac with a minor glenoid defect and you are going to add a remplissage procedure. So if you have a, a significant glenoid defect, more than 20%, don't do a bankers repair, go for a bony procedure. If you have a hill sac defect, you can do a remplissage with the banker or do a lethargy. If you have both, go for lethargy. Patients with generalized ligament laxity have very high failure rates with banker repair because you are lying on insufficient soft tissues. Again, these patients <coughs> do better bony procedures for them. 
So when do we do bony procedures for anterior shoulder dislocation? Main indication, glenoid defect, bipolar, that's glenoid and hill sacs, previous failed banker, especially if more than once because we suspect that we have deficient soft tissues now, Hagel lesion because there is the, the repairing on the humeral side is technically demanding and it has inferior results, both. Hill sacs defect, it's another option. Of course, rim plassage is another option. Log dislocations, log the anterior dislocations, because usually they have huge hill sacs defects. Patients with generalized ligament laxity and those with ISIS or glenoid tract instability scores more than three. We have two types. The Bresto, which is taking the tip of the coracoid and fix, fixing it to the glenoid neck. So the site where we make the osteotomy is where it lies on the glenoid neck. So we do the osteotomy fix it by one screw to the glenoid neck. The latter G is a larger part and it lies down on the glenoid neck. In the classic latter G, the inferior surface of the glenoid is to the glenoid Additionally, we can take the part of the brachioacromial ligament and suture it to the anterior surface. What we usually do nowadays is what's called the congruent arch latter G. And in this case, we fix the medial border of the coracoid to the glenoid neck. So this is our approach. It's mainly focused on the coracoid. We can see the coracoid, the conjoint tendon. On the right side, medially, this is the pectoralis minor attached. Dr. Majid, you can help us get away from the microphone a little bit, because the sound is very loud. Is the sound clear? Clear, Dr. Tamim. On the right side, the pectoralis minor is attached to the medial border of the coracoid. If we are going to do a congruent arc, this medial side where the pectoralis minor is attached, we release it, and this is what we fix to the glenoid neck. We do the osteotomy. Most of the coracoid, just anterior to the coracoclavicular ligament, is osteotomized, and then we fix to the glenoid neck with two screws. It's a small incision about four centimeters, we make our approach, we do the osteotomy with the coracoid and the attached conjoint tendon. We make two holes in our graft, bony graft. We make a split in the subscapularis because we want to benefit from the additional sling effect. We freshen the glenoid neck by an osteotome and then we fix to the glenoid neck by two screws. Make sure that our graft is flush with the surface of the glenoid. It's not lateral to the edge of the glenoid acting as a bony buttress because this will lead to shoulder arthritis. And we fixed by the two screws and now we have increased the glenoid track or the functional glenoid arc. And this is how it looks. Later J can be done in a mini open approach or an arthroscopic approach. If we have a banker repair which failed, we can go for a lethargy. But what if we have a failed lethargy? This is a big problem. And therefore, we, we should not do lethargy for straightforward patients with eyes scores less than three. Because if, if it fails, then the salvage is not the best procedure. So this case had a failed lethargy. It's dislocating again. And the bone graft is resolved. What we do is a tricortical iliac crest graft. It's again congruent with the arc of the glenoid and fixed by two screws. It does not have a sling effect, but it does add to the glenoid track and it has comparable results in terms of redislocation compared to lethargy. So this is a lethargy and this is the iliac crest graft, which we call Eden Ibinetta. So lethargy is the cornerstone for the bony procedures. The iliac crest graft is usually reserved for failed latter J procedures. It has good results in terms of redislocation rate, but it has an increased rate of shoulder arthritis, and this is the main problem, and that's why we usually use it only as a salvage for failed coracoid transfer procedures. Thank you. بشكر أيوة دكتور أنا جاهز بس ماجد يفصل الشيرنج بتاعه آه.
اوكي الصوت واضح كده؟ واضح واضح اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ديسيجن ميكينج اند الجوريزميك ابروتش تو شولدر انستابيليتي After we heard the previous three lectures about uh, pathology and how to do arthroscopic banquet repair and liturgy, we have to make a choice for the patient. So management of shoulder instability has changed along with understanding of shoulder pathology and biomechanics. And follow-up of the previously approved lines of treatment showed a high rate of complications that demanded a complete change of treatment plan. Burkhardt and his colleagues in 2014 proposed an algorithmic treatment approach. This treatment paradigm broke the common shoulder instability cases into four subgroups to help us to guide a surgical technique most appropriately appropriate to employ. Instability severity index score or ISIS score by Pascal Boileau in 2017 was revalidated in 2019 by Castania and modified in 2020 by Giacomo also serves as a predictive tool to assess the risk of recurrent shoulder dislocation, following arthroscopic bank repair, and also guides in decision making in instability cases. So if we apply this on some cases to make benefit of the last uh, three sessions, the first one is 34 years old patient, dominant right shoulder, first dislocation to surgery for six months, number of dis with dislocations was three. He's a light manual worker, no active sport activities, no professional, no hyperlaxity, and motor very dislocation with swollen outstretched hand. The plain X-ray looks normal, CT scan looks normal, on fast view of the of the glenoid looks normal, no glenoid defect. And the MRI show clear, straightforward banker lesion. So According to the previous sessions, what do we choose? Letter G, open bank card repair, or arthroscopic bank card repair. If you would like to, to, to make a, a choice, you are well, welcome. Okay. So the choice is a circovic bank card repair. Uh, according to the previous algorithm, no or minimal heel sac lesion, minimal glenoid defect, definitely it will be on track. So straightforward arthroscopic bank card repair with three sutures anchors. This will be very satisfactory results provided in a good technique. If we change to another more or less complicated cases, age at surgery is 30 years, first dislocation of 10 months, number of dislocations is five, manual worker, no sports activity, no hyperlaxity, and the mode of dislocation was fallen out stretched. If you can see the seat scan, we will, we will see a large heat sex lesion, also a minimal glenoid defect, So what the options according to the previous lectures, we have letter G, arthroscopic bank at repair, arthroscopic bank at repair with remplissage. If you want to add answers, one or two or three. Okay. Okay, so according to the algorithm, the heel sex lesion large, glenoid defect less than 25%, this large heel sex lesion will lead to off track. So we have two options, Bankert repair and remplissage, or letter G with open capsular shift. Letter G only will not, will not be satisfactory according to the literature. Bankert and remplissage will do better results. Actually, adding remplissage to arthroscopic bank card repair in such cases will reduce the recurrent instability or failure of the case by four folds comparing with isolated uh, bank card repair. So in these cases, which is rare, it's about 5% of all cases, 
Bankert and the implicage combine, or letter G with open bank, uh, uh, capsular shift. Not letter G alone. If you shift to another scenario, a patient with age 26, first dislocation of 23 months, number of dislocation eight, manual worker, no sports activity, no hyperlaxity, more than first dislocation was fallen outstretched hand. We can see a heel sex lesion, very evident, and we can see the glenoid defect. We can see the on -fuzz view, a significant glenoid defect and a heel sex lesion. So we have to address, which is more important here, is the glenoid defect. So we have three options. Letter G, capsular shift, arthroscopic banker repair with remplissage. If you can choose one. Okay. This is also a straightforward case, heel sex lesion and massive glenoid defect, more than 25%. Definitely it's off track. So we can do a letter G, either the modified one or the original one. So this is a post-operative letter G with two screws. Another complicated case, 37 years patient, first dislocation is two months, only one dislocation, manual worker, no sports activity, no hyperlaxity, and mode of dislocation was fallen out stretched hand. Again, I was saying Ali Halai still dislocated. Heel sex lesion is evident. Seat scan is very clear, large heel sex lesion and large glenoid defect, both evident in CT and MRI. So the options here are letter G, plus or minus humeral head intervention, conventional shoulder arthroplasty, and reversed shoulder arthroplasty. Can you pick a choice? Okay. So, this group four of uh, shoulder instability, it's a glenoid greater, glenoid defect, uh, greater defect more than 25, plus heel sex lesion off track or engaged or dislocated. This is a type four. So that the, the, the approach technique will be bony procedure for the glenoid plus or minus humeral head defect management. So we have to start with the the glenoid defect uh, reconstruction, then if it is not enough, we can shift for or, uh, or add for humeral head procedure. The humeral head procedure will be either a grafting technique or remplissage. So in this case, this is a breast operation and remplissage to uh, anchors and to fill the defect with the infraspinate. Uh, one of the answers uh, I got it, it was uh, shoulder arthroplasty. Shoulder arthroplasty in neglected case, especially in anterior case, will end in failure because the anterior uh, capsule, anterior structure will be overstretched. And even if you do shoulder arthroplasty and increase the retroversion, it also will go all the construct into anterior dislocation again. Another case age of surgery at 20, first dislocation at 72 months, number of dislocation more than 20, student, ligamentous hyperlaxity, sports activity, non-professional football player, mode of first dislocation, fallen on shoulder while riding a horse. Low basina aradiyah alayl plane x-ray looks normal, C-scan almost normal, MRI normal, there is no defect, humeral or, or uh, glenoid but the ligamentous hyperlaxity, hyperextension of the elbow, and almost 90 degree external rotation in full adduction. So as the last uh, session of Dr. Maggid, Sami, this very malleable soft tissue and the redundant soft tissue is not reliable for repair. So you have to go for a bony procedure as letter G, 
to provide more stability and sling effect. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dr. Amr, at the end. Again, I would like to thank the EVA uh, Farm Company, Dr. Riyad, Dr. Uh, Michael, Dr. Mohammed uh, Bakr, for their support. Now, uh, Dr. Amr will moderate the session Not and we'll go for the answer of the questions. Any of the participants who want to ask any question, I'll ask you to ask يبعت الاسئله على الكويستشن اند انسر تاب بعد اذنكم. في ثلاث اسئله مكتوبين. اه السؤال هيبقى لكل البانل في احد الاتنديز بيسال ايه المانجمنت بتاع الاكيوت شولدر لوكيشن ويز اسوشيتد جريتر تيبيوزيتي فراكشر. السؤال لكل السبيكرز نستاذن في الاكيوت شولدر ديسلوكيشن ومعاها جريتر تيبيوزيتي فراكشر. عادة مع كلوز ريدكشن الجريتر تيوبروستي بيرجع في مكانه. في نسبة صغيرة ما بيرجعش ساعتها هتحتاج تعمل له اوبر ريدكشن وترجعه في مكانه تاني اند فيكس ويز سكروز اور وات ايفر مين اوف تكنيك. ده ابارت فروم الجزء بتاع ان حصل له بانكر بانكر كليجن او لا. انما الجريتر تيوبروستي عادة لما بيتكسر في الانتيريو شولد ديستوكيشن تروماتيك انتيريو شولد ديستوكيشن مع كلوز ريدكشن more than 90% to be erga in place mark closed reduction. Now, Margashi, you have to uh, go and uh, reduce it. Other than the upper reduction. Well, I'm going to tell you about the other thing. The greater tuberosity avulsion with anterior dislocation shoulder after closed reduction in the humeral head for glenoid, other than greater tuberosity erga. What's after? What's after? What's after? What's after? In my hand, and I push a hot two screws, percutaneous screws for the greater tuberosity. If I am clever enough in arthroscopy, I can do rotator cuff or uh, RC anchors and repair the avulsed greater tuberosity, then go for the bunker procedure. And I'll tell you the story that it doesn't the anterior dislocation with rotator cuff avulsion for the young people who are 45 years old. When you listen to the stable, the young people are in the middle of the وسنه اكثر من 45 سنه هنا الاسوشيشن بين الافالجن او الروتيتور كاف تير مع الانتيريور بانكر تير از فيري هاي بي كيرفول فروم ذا ايج اوف ذا بيشن يعني احنا قلنا كده حاجتين برضو عشان الناس ما تلخبطش حاجتين سيبريت اللي بيسال على بوني فراكشر اوف ذا جريتر تيوبروستي سايزابل بوني فراجمنت فهو الاجابه زي ما ما سمعناها احنا هنعمل ريدكشن لو رجعت كومبليتلي ان بليس وي كونزرف اذروايز وي فيكس اللي الدكتور احمد سعيد قاله وده مهم جدا الناس الفيرست تايم ديسلوكيتر اباف 40 اور 50 ييرز يوجوالي دي هاف ان اسوشيتد روتيتور كاف تير نوت فراكشر اوف ذا جريتر تيوبروستي وعشان كده وي هاف تو دو ذا روتيتور كاف تير هسال سؤال تاني للسبيكرز برضو في ناس من البارتيسبانس عايزين يعرفوا يعني ايه كابسولر شيفت وامتى نعمل كابسولر شيفت؟ فاستاذ دكتور احمد سعيد كده يقول لنا رايه الاول هي هي كلمه كابسولر شيفت كلمه كبيره قوي هي لا تعني شيء اكتر من ان العيانين اللي عندهم بانكرت انجري او انتيو شولدر بيحصل كابسولر انلارجمنت كبسول بيوسع وبمع وسعان الكبسول ده بيحصل Anterior limb of the inferior glenohumeral ligament be a torn. So that we was the message. We are going to reduce this inferior glenoid pouch to reduce the size of it, so we don't damage the abnormal movement of the glenohumeral joint. We reduce the size. It's called capsular shift. To shift the capsule from the inferior to superior. It's like a bumping action. It's like you're doing a bump. 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 بامبنج على الانتيرو جلينويد نيك طب طب حضرتك الليميت بتاعنا هناخد كبسول من تحت قد ايه عشان احنا عارفين ان الفاوش قريبين من الاكسيلري نيرف فعشان ما نعورش الاكسيلري نيرف اخرك عاده في الفيرست انكور الساعه 5 عاده من الابروتش بتاعنا الانتيرو ابروتش الساعه 5 اخرك او 4 ونص تقريبا الليفل بتاعك فده عاده بيبقى بعيد على الاكسلري نيرف ويا دوبك تاخد سوفت تيشو بالكبسول بالليبرم بالجلينو هيومرال ليجامنت تاخدهم وان 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 سوتشر بترفعهم كلهم لفوق ده از مور ذان انف الشيفت بتاعك تمام 
دكتور عمرو عبد الهادي استاذن حضرتك كنت بتقول لنا راي حضرتك كده فهمت بالنسبه لل لل للليبرال الكابسولر شيفت يعني الكابسولر شيفت ايه الانديكيشنز حضرتك امتى بنعمله و... هي الكابسولر شيفت الحقيقه هي من العمليات ال ال بتاعها كريزلتس متقدمه جدا ونتائجها كويسه جدا ولا زالت بتعتبر جولد ستاندرد في كل الليترشر لحالات الهايبر لاكستي و... 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 ويمكن كانت لفتره طويله في حالات المالتي دايركشن انستابيليتي كانت لا زالت نمره واحد في ال... في الليترشر هي مشكلتها آه... هو تشويس اوف ذا بيشنت اند التكنيك بتاعها ممكن جدا تتعمل مع عمليات ثانيه يعني انت بتعمل ليبرال تير وعندك كابسولر كابسولر لاكس تي تقدر تاخدها في تاوجمنت في بعض الحالات السن الصغير ودي حالات الحقيقه مش كومن الصغيرين اللي في سن 20 22 الحاجات دي ممكن تعملها في حالات اللي جامنت سايبر لاكس تي موصوفه ارثوسكوبيك وموصوفه اوبن طبعا الحقيقه في كل الليترشر لغايه دلوقتي الكلام على الاوبن كابسولر شيفت لا زال احسن كتير من الارثوسكوبيك كابسولر شيفت طبعا الارثوسكوبيك كابسولر شيفت اسهل الانسيجن صغير جدا هو منظار في الاول وفي الاخر انما النتائج على ارض الواقع في الليترشر ان فيفر للاوبن كابسولر شيفت لغايه فيري ريزن ما بقتش يعني من العمليات الاولى اللي بتتعمل حقيقي سؤال للدكتور ماجد سامي سؤال بيقول لو هل اللاتر جي اوبريشن بتغير الشولدر بايوميكانكس ولا لا؟ احنا عندنا اللاتر جي لو احنا مش عاوزينها تغير الشولدر بايوميكانكس يبقى احنا هنحتاج ان احنا نعمل السبليت زي ما قلنا في السبسكابيولاريس في الميدل اوف ذا سبسكابيولاريس او في الجنكشن بتوين البروكسيمال تو ثيردز اند انفيريور ثيرد لو احنا عملنا مور بروكسيمال سبليت في السب سكابيولاريس حتى لو قدرنا تو مانج تو بوت ذا جرافت ان ذا انفيرور هاف اوف ذا جلينويد وي ار اكستريملي ليميتنج ذا رينج اوف اكسترنال روتيشن وده ويل افكت الميكانكس اذروايز وي وي كان ريتش ان اولموست فول رينج اوف موشن طيب سؤال تاني على البوني بانكرت ده سؤال لكل السبيكرز مع لو في دايجنوزد بوني بانكرت مع مع اكيوت شولدر ديسلوكيشن ايه المانجمنت لو يانج ادلت وشخصنا ان عنده اكيوت بانكرت مع الفيرست ديسلوكيشن مع بوني بانكرت مع الفيرست شولدر ديسلوكيشن ايه المانجمنت بتاعه هل يمشي كونزرفاتيف ولا هنعمل له سيرجيكال انترفينشن ولو هنعمل سيرجيكال انترفينشن هنعمل له ايه انترفينشن نبتدي باستاذ دكتور احمد سعيد بص يعني حكايه اكيوت ديسلوكيشن وما يتعملوش سيرجري ما بقتش موجوده ليه؟ لا هو بس كمان اكيوت ومعاه بوني بانكرت مش انا مش انا هاخد بس الاكيوت الاول وبعدين اخش آه. على البوني فاكيوت ديسلوكيشن شولدر انت عندك كلاسيكالي في ليبرال تير كلاسيكالي الكبسول وسع كلاسيكالي الانفيرو جرين هومر ليجامنت اتقطع كلاسيكي في بون ليجن فانت هتستنى العين تعالجه كونزرت في اول مره هتستنى لما يجي له ديسلوكيشن سكند تايم تبقى الامور اصعب والسوفت تيشو انجري اصعب الكلام ده اعتقد على يعني ناس كتيره قوي متفقه معايا في الراي فيرست تايم ديسلوكيشن مين سيرجري مينز ريبير اوف ذيس باثولوجي تو ليميت لما نتدخل والهيل ساك 10% 15% احسن من نتدخل والهيل ساك 70 80% زي ما شفنا الصور والراديولوجي اللي اتعرضت مع الساده الاساسيه لما اخش وعندي ليبرال جلينو انتيريو جلينويد ديفكت نص سنتي ولا ثلاث ارباع سنتي ما احسن ما اخش الاقي نص الجلينويد از ابسنت في الريكارنت ديسلوكيشن فالقصه دلوقتي اكيوت ديسلوكيشن مينز اكيوت ريبير ده ان ماي اوبينيون وراي ناس كتير في الليترشر الحاجه الثانيه ممكن عندك بوني ليجن اولا السوفت تيشو ريبير ماست بي دوكيومنتد رقم اثنين البوني ليجن ده فين؟ هل هو في الهيد ولا في الجلينويد ولا في اللين البايبولار ليجن زي لو الليجن في الهيد هيل ساك ليجن أنا أحب أضيف مع البانكرت والليبرا ريبير أحب أحط ريم بلاساج ده برايمري كده لو عندي البوني ليجن في الجلينويد إف إت إز ريبيرابل أقدر أحط سكرو كان يوليت سكرو في الجلينويد تير وأصلح الليبرا عليه أي جو إف إت إز جلينويد ديفكت وعنديش بون موجود وأبسنت بون والكلام ده بيبقى في كرونيك كيسز عادة يبقى هنا اللاتر جي أو البريستاو 
اذا سالفج بروسيجر اقدر اخش اعملها عشان تريستور الجرينويد ارك لو عندي الاثنين دي بقت مشكله اكبر بقى عندي الاثنين هعمل الهيل ساك وهعمل الجلينويد عاده بنكتفي بالجلينويد في اللاترجي بروسيجر في طبعا عمليات ثانيه غير الريمبلاساج للهيومورال هيد زي البون جرافت بتاع الهيومورال هيد سواء بيتعمل ارثروسكوبيك او بون جرافتنج اوبن دي بروسيجر بتتعمل كلها وفي عمليات اسمها دي روتيشن اوستيوتومي لكن احنا بنتكلم على الكلاسيك ريمبلاساج بانكر زائد هيومورال هيد يساوي بانكر ريبير زائد ريمبلاساج بانكر زائد جلينويد ديفيشنسي يساوي بانكر بلس او لاتر جي بروسيجر ده ماي انسر دكتور عمرو عبد الهادي استاذ حضرتك كده راي حضرتك لو العيان عنده بوني بانكر وفيرست تايم ديستوكيشن الترند بتاع الريبير او او مانجمنت اوف فيرست تايم ديستوكيشن ده اتغير على مدار السنين لو تفتكر في اول سلايد كنت حاططها ان المانجمنت بتاع الشولدر انستابيلتي اتغير على مدار الوقت اتغير على مدار الوقت علشان الباثولوجي بقى بقى اوضح والباي ميكانكس اتغيرت. الحقيقه الهيلينج بتاع الليبرال تير از فيري يعني انزنس از فيري سمول. فالسيناريو اللي كان بنفكر فيه زمان او بيتعمل زمان لغايه سي مثلا 15 سنه ان هو ممكن يلحم لا هو في الاغلب مش هيلحم. مع الحركه ومع الاكستند روتيشن ومع الحركه اليوميه لان عاده اللي بيجي له شولدر ديسلوكيشن عاده في السن الصغير حوالين ال 20 اكتر شويه. وحيث ان الليبرام ده مش حي... مش هيحصل له ريبير يعني مش هيحصل له هيلينج سوري هيبقى هيتحول ديفينتلي الى ريكرنت شولدر ديستريبيشن طب وانا ليه استنى آه ل... ل... لما يحصل آه الليبرال تير ده يكبر او يحصل كومباين هيد ليجن او يحصل آه ليبرال آه بانكر آه سوري آه جلينويد انجري او بون ديفكت طب ما ادخل من الاول واخلصه بحيث ان انا اثبت الهيد وانس وخلاص لو تفتكر زمان يا عمرو كان يعني الترند اتغير في حاجه بره الموضوع ده الاي سي ال الريكونستراكشن اوف ذا سي ال زمان كان بنقول العين استنى وبعدين كذا شهر وبعدين نعمل دلوقتي خلاص بقى سنين طويله بتعمل اكيوت فمع تغير الباثولوجي لا خلاص ما عادش بقى حكايه انه يستنى في سلينج ونستنى لغايه ما يبقى كرونيك لا خلاص وانس انه حصل بقى في باثولوجي يو هاف تو دوكيومنت الباثولوجي كويس بسيت سكان بام ار اي تعرف الليجن اللي موجود تعالجه مره واحده والموضوع انتهى. دكتور ماجد هو السؤال كان على البوني بانكرت الحقيقه احنا أوه. يعني هنحط اثنين تو سيناريوز ونحط جراي زون في سيناريو واحد اقل من 20 سنه وفي سيناريو واحد اكبر من 30 سنه دول تو سيناريوز وهنتكلم على السايز احنا قلنا في الاول لو اكيوت فراكشر واخد اكتر من 1 فورث اوف ذا جلينويد وي هاف تو فيكس ذا فراجمنت لو هي فراجمنتد بس تيكينج مور ذان 20% اوف ذا ويث اوف ذا جلينويد ذن وي هاف تو دو ا بوني بروسيجر يبقى احنا لو اكتر من 1 فورث هنثبتها لو اكتر من 20% اوف ذا ويث اند فراجمنتد ذن وي ويل جو فور ا كوراكويد ترانسفير بروسيجر لو اقل من 20% وي كان دو ا سوفت تيشو طب هنعمل له عمليه ولا مش هنعمل له عمليه وهو فيرست تايم ديسلوكيت اللي عنده السايز مور ذان 1 فورث في اكيوت فراكشر وفي فراجمنت وي هاف تو فيكس ات اني واي اللي عنده فيرست تايم ديسلوكيتور وعنده لوست مور ذان 20% اوف ذا ويتس ريجاردلس اوف ذا ايج هي از جوينج تو بي ا ريكارنت ديسلوكيتور اند وي هاف تو جو فور ا بوني بروسيجر طب اللي عنده فراجمنتيشن ليس ذان 20% اوف ذا ويت اوف ذا جلينويد از ا فيرست تايم dislocator if he's below 20 we go for surgery and in this case it can be a soft tissue operation the na it's less than 20 if he is above 30 i think we should wait and do a rehabilitation because there is a good chance he will not be a recurrent dislocator the gray zone in between depends on his sports activities طيب سؤال ثاني برضه لكل السبيكرز لو عيان عنده بانكر ليجن واسوشيتد روتيتور كاف ليجن هل نعمل الاثنين في نفس السيشن ولا نبتدي بحاجه الاول ولا ممكن نعالج حاجه ونسيب حاجه دكتور احمد سعيد راي حضرتك ايه احنا تعرضنا للقصه دي البانكر مع الروتيتور كاف قلنا بيحصل في عيانين اكتر من 45 سنه تسمع عيان في الطوارئ عنده 45 سنه او اكتر ومخلوع كتفه اعمل له ام ار اي لان ده هيبقى عنده روتيتور كاف تير عاده الاسوشيشن عالي قوي في السن ده 
نعمل انه روتيتور ولا البانكر لو عملت البانكر بس الروتيتور از ا سورس اوف ريديسلوكيشن لو عملت الروتيتور الديسلوكيشن حي العيان حي حي بيرزيست في الديسلوكيشن ان ماي هاند دو بوس ات ذا سيم سيشن بوس ات ذا سيم سيشن ايزر اوبن ارثروسكوبيك حسب السيرجيكال اكسبيرينس بتاع الجراح لكن انا بحب اعملهم الاثنين مع بعض وعاوز اقول ان الليتريتشر النشر فيها حوالي 10 حالات 12 حاله للجراحين الاسوشيتد بانكرت مع الروتيتور كاف انا اتعرضت لكذا حاله من حاجات زي كده والريزلت تبقى كويسه قوي مع الاكيوت اتاك اوف ذيس دبل ليشن طب حضرتك في السيرجري هتبتدي بالبانكرت الاول ولا بالكاف ريبير الاول؟ لا رقم واحد انا اشتغل في في الروتيتور كف الاول وبعد كده اعمل البانكرت تمام دكتور عمرو عبد الهادي الكومبينيشن اللي هو ما بين بانكرت ريبير بانكرت ليجن وروتيتور كف بير كاكيوت مش حاجه كرونيك از فيري ريال الديسيجن بيبقى على حسب سن العيان الاكتيفيتي بتاعته لو هو زي ما الوصف اللي وصفه احمد سعيد اللي هو 45 سنه اكتف الى حد ما اي هاف تو دو بوت مش هسيب الاثنين مع بعض يعني طالما هعملهم هعملهم الاثنين مره واحده ليه ليه هعمل بس دي دي حاجه مش كومن الحقيقه مش يعني ما بتتشافش كل يوم انت ممكن تقعد سنين ما تشوفش غير حاله انما وانس ان العيان اكتف وبيتحرك وكلام من ده يو هاف تو دو بوت تمام دكتور ماجد رايح حضرتك ايه؟ انا رايي برضو يو دو بوت والحقيقه انا يعني اي هاف ا فيو كيسز in their 50s and their 60s you do both in the same session you do both arthroscopically التسلسل انا ما اعرفش يفرق ولا لا الحقيقه انا اي دول بانكرت الاول لان انا بدخل الشولدر الاول وبعدين بعمل الكف الورينج اباوت الانكرز وعددها الحقيقه هو الريت اوف ريديس لوكيشن مش عالي فاي يوشولي اي دونت يوز 3 انكرز فور ذا بانكر اي ثينك 2 از انف في الايج جروب ده لان الريديس لوكيشن عندهم مش عالي بروفايدد يو دو ا بروبر كف ريبير بس I do both, I do both arthroscopic and I start with the banker repair. يبقى يبقى يعني مش شرط الترتيب ممكن نبتدي بالبانكرت ريبير وممكن نبتدي بالكف كل واحد حسب الاكسبيرينس بتاعته يعني ما فيش حاجه ليها اولويه على الثانيه في السيشن انما هم الاثنين يتعاملوا في نفس السيشن يعني هنبتدي بمين كل واحد حسب الاكسبيرينس بتاعته بعد اذنك انا احب ابتدي بالروتيتور الاول عشان اقفل السبيس اقفل السبيس بيحصل فيه فلويد ليكج السبيس اللي هو الواسع قوي ده اقفله الاول ويتفضل لي الانتيرو انا عارف في البانكر محتاج كابسولر ريدكشن كابسولر شيفت محتاج كابسولر سمولينج ذا سايز اوف ذا كابسول فالكلام ده مش هيتم الا بعد ما اخلص الروتيتور ريبير وبعدين اخش على الابرام دي الاكسبيرينس بتاعتي طبعا طول ماجد ليه هيز بيرسونال اكسبيرينس والكلام ديبيتابل واكسبتد على كل الاحوال المهم اتخرج عن كويس تمام بشكر